Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. Now, the, in the video series, we're going to move on here to circle equations. Sometimes you're given an equation in one form. Sometimes it's called conic form. And um, then you have to kind of manipulate it a little bit, use what's called completing the square, so you can put it in a form of an equation where you can graph it. Okay, it's a little tool to sort of use some algebra tricks and tools so that you can graph uh, the function a little bit better. So... The basics of completing the square, as I've mentioned in a previous video, is this. You have to find the third term in a perfect square trinomial. And the little rule to remember in green, pretty simple if you uh, kind of practice a little bit. Find half of the middle term and then you square that amount. And that will give you your third term, which is the important part. Then we need to apply that to the equation of a circle. Now in standard form it's going to look like this. Okay, You have an x group squared, a y group squared equals a radius squared. Okay, So r represents the radius of course and if you can rewrite an equation in standard form like this it will be a circle and the vertex or the center is going to be at h, k. Alright, the center. I should cross that out. So I'm going to have you try, or I'll actually work through a couple of examples with you, and then the next video in this series is going to be problems you can try yourself with my guidance. All right, here we go. In numbers 1 and 2, we notice that we have an x squared and a y squared. We have an x term and a y term, and then there's usually a constant number like that 265 you see there. Same thing for number 2. So here's the first thing you got to do. We want to group the x terms together and the y terms together, and we'll have to complete the square for the x group and the y group. All right. Now the very first step is to deal with this constant. So I'm going to subtract 265 from each side, and I've grouped the x's together and left a space. There's got to be a third term right there. And group the y terms together and left a space there. All right, now let's figure out completing the square in both parts. In the x group, I have 14x would be my middle term. Half of that is 7. Square it. So I'm going to add 49. In the y group, I take half of negative 30, that coefficient there, that's negative 15, and now I have to square that. So it's going to be 225. Using some pretty big numbers here. Now, the problem is, I can't just leave it at that because when you take an equation and just throw another number in, you have to balance it by doing the opposite on the other side of the equal sign. Okay, in other words, if I'm going to add 49 and 225, what's the total? Well, let's see, let's figure that out. 49 and 225 is going to be. 274. So I better add 274 on the other side. I've added a total of 274 on the left, now I have to add it on the right. Keep it balanced in this equation. Now we need to factor each group and this kind of involves thinking backwards here. Remember to get the 49 we squared the 7, so it's got to be an x plus 7 quantity squared. And the 225 came from 15 squared actually negative 15 squared. So we're going to have a 15 there. Notice how we keep the negative sign. All right. Now, uh, when I subtract, you get 9. So what this tells me, if I was going to take the next step and graph this circle, I would know that the center is at... Now remember, we in the formula, we need a subtraction sign there. So it's really x take away negative 7, isn't it? So the center has an x-coordinate of negative 7 and a y-coordinate of positive 15. You've got to be careful with those signs. The radius is going to be 3. Okay, not 9. You have to take the square root of that. All right, so we've taken something 
in conic form and you've rearranged it, completed the square twice, done it very carefully and now you could locate the center of the circle and the radius and put it on a graph if you needed to. Alright, let's do number two. Alright, first thing I do is I subtract 5 to get it from the left side over to the right. It becomes a negative 5. And then I group my x's together, leave a space, and group my y uh, terms together and leave a space. We want to have a perfect square trinomial there and a perfect square trinomial there, so we have to complete the square. Alright, half of 8 is 4 and square it. 16. Half of negative 10 is negative 5 and square it. It's going to be 25. Now remember, in green here, I added a total of 41, right? Total of 41, so I better do the same on the opposite side. All right, well, let's factor out these trinomials here. And remember that 16 came from 4 times 4, and so it's x plus 4 quantity squared. And the 25 came from the 5 times 5, so it's going to be y minus 5 in that group, quantity squared, and I subtract there, or actually combine that to get 36. All right, again, that tells me now if I wanted to graph this circle, the x coordinate for the center would be a negative 4 because of the subtraction needed to be in that first group. Negative 4, positive 5. Watch the signs. And since it's 36, the radius must be 6. All right, so. Thanks for working through this with me, and I hope that it made some sense to you. Now in the next video, it's going to be problem set number three. Give those a try. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.